Hi guys, KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila, where we are working to inspire positive, radical social evolution by uniting mission-driven humans. I'm excited to be with you today. We are talking more on leadership, which you know this is the focus for this year. And I'm going to give you 10 quick bullet points to level up your leadership. These are really the baseline for any leadership situation. So I encourage parents, coaches, entrepreneurs, corporate humans, anyone out there. We are all influencers, inspirers, leaders in some capacity. Write down these 10 fundamental steps so you can level up personally and then professionally lead your team to the next level. Have a great day. Be sure to check us out wherever you get your podcasts and watch this video on YouTube. Cheers. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Hi guys, KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm excited. It is a glorious Friday here in Colorado. No joke, it is 17 degrees and if you watch this cast back on YouTube, you will see, you can see my breath in the studio. Um, I try to be as transparent about this podcast process as possible. So as a glamorous, or maybe it doesn't seem glam, glam, glamorous, I don't know. Uh, but if it does, there are a lot of bumps in this road and it is work in the best way. I absolutely love it. Um, hence, I'm sitting in 17 degree weather with a heater in front of me. And we're going to talk about leadership because even if my body's freezing, my heart is on fire because I love this. I love podcasting. I love being here with you, all the cliches. Uh, and on that note, we are going to be talking about leadership today. You know, this is a running theme for turmeric and tequila for myself as a human, as a coach, as an athlete, as an entrepreneur for 2023 slash forever. Um, and we're going to lean into it this year because leaders are what we need for our future to change things and get things going and get this world moving in the right direction. So we're going to start with personal responsibility. And that's where our leadership converse, conversation comes in. And I was inspired to have this conversation because I read this statistic that really blew my mind. And we're going to talk a lot about leadership throughout the year, like I said, and you'll probably hear some redundant things, but these are like just key pillars we've got to drive home, not only for leaders like in business or in sports or as uh, a CEO or a leader on the field, whatever, but as parents, as eldest siblings or Maybe you're the sibling and the leader, even though you're the the youngest, or maybe you're the sophomore on the team, but you can lead in certain ways. This is really for everybody because we are all influencers, which by that I really mean leaders in some way because people are watching us. People are consuming and seeing our behaviors way more than we ever knew. And that's why this personal responsibility is so critical that we lean in and really try and level up in our own personal space so we can collectively impact the greater good while we're impacting ourselves. So we're walking in um, higher vibes and higher level and, uh, you know, just modeling better behavior because so many people really are watching what we're doing, whether you like it or not. So you're a leader, you're an influencer. Let's go. A recent study by the Center for Creative Leadership showed that roughly 38 percent to more than half of new leaders fail within their first 18 months. Leaders can avoid becoming part of this staggering statistic by incorporating good leadership strategies that motivate their team members to accomplish this goal, to accomplish their goals. So again, these are 10 quick, easy tips. I really encourage you to write these down. I will have them listed in simple form when this podcast comes out and in the bio. But these are great. I'd have your kids listen to this conversation. I'd listen to this as parents, as coaches, as business owners, as humans, whatever your job might be. Again, people are watching you. And these are leadership skills in being a leader, but these are just phenomenal skills as being, trying to level up as a human and positively impact the people around you. So if leader or influencer doesn't really stick well with you as a title, that's totally fine. Like I said, branding, reality is nothing more than applied meaning. So don't get overwhelmed with the label. Just recognize that you have impact in this world. Your voice matters, your behavior matters. So if you can just grasp onto that, these are really great things just to level up for yourself and then in turn level up for everybody else. So number one, we know this is true and our kiddos I think are actually really good at this, is engage in honest, open communication. This is really critical. We talk a ton about humanizing the brand, letting people see the human imperfect side so they can connect with you. And in turn, there's creates that space where you can be honest and vulnerable and have really clear, direct communication about what's going on. I would say for a business, absolutely important, but even more important for a family. We know how complicated hard family com conversations can be. And to create that open, safe space to have 
uh, you know, open, probably hard combo uh, is, is important so that it doesn't escalate or doesn't get buried for 30 years, like most of us in our families, and then come out when we're older, and then you got to unpack it then. So let's create that space now so where you can have that conversation right now and move on to the next thing, but more importantly, create that habit to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. One of the most important elements of effective leadership is creating an, an open line of communication with your team members. And uh, let's see, one of the founders and directors of TechLogic said that your own honesty and transparency should serve as an example for your team members. So this is kind of what it's just saying. Uh, lead by example, let that transparency come through. Lead as a human. If you're having a hard time in your life or you've experienced, you know, rough roads, share that with your kids, share that with your team members, create that space for them to be open and honest. The more you do it, the more they will do it. Again, really simple concept here, but open honest communication is hard. And in society, I think especially all of us that are 35 and above, we've really taught to say the nice thing, say the polite thing. And while in certain social contexts that is necessary, uh, that's probably a whole podcast right there, <laughs> whether you do white lies or not, we're not here for that. But it's really about just telling the truth and being as honest as you can with grace in the moment so you don't start off in the wrong foot or you don't continue down the wrong path of just saying the right thing or being polite. Because if you want, if you have a goal in mind, if you want the best for your family, your team, whatever, you've got to have be honest and you've got to say those really hard truths to get to the next level. And anyone that's been in um, a family situation, I mean, we all know those can be really hard conversations and your blood. So you kind of have to come back to that baseline of how we're going to figure this out. But team and 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 business, you You'll lose your team members. You'll lose your their employees, their buy-in, their motivation. It's really, really critical. There's not that family tie at the end to to make them stay. Um, and sometimes in family, it's not even there. So we got to really keep this authentic and and keep them motivated to want to be there. So let the human side be out there. Okay, moving on to number two, connect with your team members. So see how these all kind of fit together. It's really about being a human, open, honest communication, and then genuine connection. Leading a group of people requires a mutual sense of trust and understanding between the leader and their team members. To achieve this, leaders should learn to connect. So be really, really honest. Uh, Terry Starbucker, St. Marie, a leadership writer and consultant said that being a more human leader requires positivity, purpose, empathy, compassion, humility, and love. These are key traits. These key traits will put you on the road to genuine connections with members of your team. So again, for a lot of our old school leaders or many of us that have been around the corporate block for uh, a long time, these are new concepts in the leadership world. This human side, this really empathetic love, like tell me about your personal world, always have boundaries. Um, is is new and it's kind of uncomfortable i think for leaders that have been in the game for a long time but new school leaders this is where it's at and this is how you are keeping your family members your teammates your uh employees motivated to genuinely want to be there you've got to lead with that personal stuff again i always put the asterisk there with having your professional boundaries but if you know if you're having a hard time or you're working on your mental health you can even just say that you don't always have to go into details but let that human side shine and that will create space for connection and then the connection leads to open communication Number three, encourage personal and professional growth. Acting your uh, acting as your team's cheerleader is an important part of your team. Uh, as an important part of being an effective leader, you should be invested in their success and growth. I think this is easy as a parent, you're, or you should be rooting for your kids, encouraging them to go to school, to learn, to level up, go to practice. Uh, as a team member, uh, athletically or professionally, encourage your employees to go get that extra degree, extra schooling, what it, whatever it is. Or maybe it's just like take time for your mental health. Go to your kid's soccer practice. When you really encourage them and show these display of choices of how you can continue to level up, that will allow them to make that choice. And that will also be a running theme in this. And in coaching and leadership in general, it's not about forcing anyone anyone's direction. It's about presenting the choices and letting them choose. And hopefully they're choosing to walk alongside, alongside you on this path to whatever your goal might be. So we really want to be encouraging um, those around us to continue to level up. And of course, that starts number one by walking in it, attitude reflects leadership. So if I'm the leader, I'm continuously doing anything I can to get better, do extras around fitness and CrossFit, go back and get on, you know, take some online courses, whatever, around leadership, entrepreneurship, whatever it might be, we're, we're continuously to level up. So as I'm suggesting this or presenting these options, level up to other people, I'm also walking in it. So I'm leading by example. And if, if I'm in it, I can communicate authentically and open with you like man how's your journey so far it's really hard i'm doing this this class was hard da, da, da. again there's that space for authentic 
transparent communication and we're connecting as humans, which in turn impacts the larger goal and just it makes the whole path towards this goal more enjoyable. Number four, keep a positive attitude. You know, who had sports camp out there? If you somebody, you can get like the attitude award back in the day. Um, lean back into all those skills. That's exactly what it's about. Attitude matters. Again, people are reading your t-shirt. They're watching your behavior. And if you've got a frown and a bad attitude, no one wants to be around that energy, let alone they're not going to be inspired to be led by it. They're not going to be wanting to be around you. So lock that attitude up. As much as leaders wish their team's day-to-day operations could run smoothly all the time, they're bound to run into occasional the occasional obstacle. Whether it's a minor miscommunication or a major error, the way you handle a negative situations says a lot about your leadership skills. So and everyone knows it's things are easy when things are easy. Like it's good. You know, that's you can be a great leader when things are easy, but the true character and your skills and your leadership abilities come when shit hits the fan. And you know this in your family, there's no really roadmap or rule book there. Uh, in your business, you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you know there's absolutely no rule book and you're kind of blazing trail whether you like it or not. So everything is trial and error. And then an, even on the athletic field, if you have a plan, you know, things are constantly fluid. You don't know what kind of judge you're going to have or referee or maybe the field conditions or the weather. Stuff is always changing and there's always obstacles. So you have to be ready to stay calm evaluate the situation, take a step back, think before you make a choice, and then operate and step forward, as I always say, as your best human self. Make the human decision before you make the business decision. Talk to the person, the athlete or the employee as a human before you talk to them as an athlete or an employee or anything else. So let's always keep this really humanized, human way um, at the baseline of all of our leadership. But number one is always, again, we're going back to that personal responsibility. So you've got to be cool, calm, and collected in the tornado of things. You know, if you're in the base tornado, you're looking up and everything's spinning, you got to figure this out. And that's okay. Do that. Number one is keep calm. Number two, recognize that you are in this leadership role. People are watching you. And then number three, Enter the problem solving space as a human being and think about how you would want to be treated if you were on the other side of this and you were in the mess and you're looking to somebody else to, you know, send a life raft or, or figure this out. Uh, Robert Mann, author of The Measure of a Leader, 2013, recommended focusing on the good in any set of circumstances. Look at three positive things about a problem before you identify what makes it dissatisfying. The more you look at the positives as a the more you look at the positives in a problem, the more positively people react with one another. So this is great times. Any breakdown, and if you're an experienced athlete, I think maybe this is where I resonate the most. Anytime you fail or there's some sort of breakdown, the breakthrough is exponential because you learn so much. And then you're leveling up continuously. Each practice gets a little bit better. Each meeting gets a little bit better. And of course, as you're leveling up, you continue to have those breakthroughs, but you are moving up and you're just gaining these incredible skill sets on how to move as a unit and level up as an individual. And what's so cool is that, again, this is shared experience. So these are where these bonds are coming in with your team. So don't shy away from, you know, catastrophe or challenges or failures, because these are really deep bonding times where you can collect with your team. I know, especially like in my collegiate experiences or some, you know, high, high level CrossFit competitions, when failure happened and we like lost as a team, I mean, to go back to the drawing board, those are such like deep bonding moments because we were all heartbroken over stuff. We're on this on the same goal and we all felt each other's pain and you connect and you bond over that. And so when you go out there and you seek the success again, the bond and the intensity and the commitment is that much deeper. So I really believe that these failures and these breakdowns are so good for teams because you connect in so many levels and man, that human connection and working, I almost want to say it's like a caterpillar, like every each little unit is working together. Um, is really magical. And man, at the end of it, success, even if you get a, a gold medal or whatever it is, or you you know make all the money or meet your profit margins, uh, you look back on the journey and man, you just smile on all those moments and all the failures and then you feel the success. It's, it's just such a magical thing. So um, keep that positive attitude and be a leader. People are watching. You already know this. Number five, teach employees instead of giving orders. You know this. We got to walk in it. An effective leader knows how to show others what is required rather than simply telling them. Luke Lorio, president and CEO of the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching, IPEC, said leaders should coach their team members toward a more collaborative, committed work environment without coaxing them. So old school leadership, do this because I said so, kind of this military style of I'm the boss, 
salute, take orders. That doesn't work in the civilian world, athletically, professionally, or personally in the family. You know your kids are not about to do that. So we've got to get them in the mix of really just giving them options. Again, I will say this every single time, walk in it. If you are a leader, if you're a parent and you want people to do or work towards a goal in a certain way, you have to be doing that. So for me, I think, uh, you know, I don't like even like the word coaxing them. Like that's kind of what it is, old school leadership. Like you're almost manipulating people to go a certain way. If you're walking in a certain way and you're reflecting positive leadership skills and positive attributes, people see that you're a happy person and you're doing stuff right, they will want to walk alongside you and be in it with you. So start with that personal responsibility. But from there, I always say give choices. And I say this a lot with my um, kids that I coach athletically, present them with opportunity costs and the understanding of what that is. And that's just a business term simply saying opportunity cost is when you choose something, you give up the opportunity to do something else. So this takes me as a coach, leader, boss, whatever, out of it and letting you know that you have the choice. Um, and I, I really do. I think kids really understand this. Like if you choose to go to this party, you are choosing not to go to practice tonight, which in turn will not allow you to be playing on Saturday. Or if you choose this lifestyle of, you know, video games and, and Cheetos, whatever, you're not going to be getting that athletic scholarship you're aiming for. Whatever it is, if you pr let them choose their path and let them truly understand what they're giving up to, to make certain choices, I really believe our kids get it. And I think this is the same thing um, with our families and with our coaches or fellow teammates. You don't need to force people in a direction. Let them understand their choices and choose in a certain way. And as a leader, it's a, you know, teach employees instead of giving them orders. I think if you uh, are walking in it, you are teaching, you are motivating, you are showing how, you know, certain choices can lead you towards a certain goal versus coaxing, you know, telling people what to do, whatever, that doesn't work. So we want to pe have people to have the opportunity to choose to walk in that direction, feel empowered, and then more committed to it. And then they're learning the skill because they've watched you do it so they can make their own choices. Um, let's see. Uh, if you are controlling people to do certain things in certain ways, you are not going to get the, get to the level of engagement that you're looking for. Coaching is about helping the people you lead recognize the choices they have in front of them. People will then take a great deal of ownership in the direction of the project. So there you go. It's all kind of the same stuff here. And the, the, these, you know, quotes and highlights are, are very business, you know, formal. I really want you to listen to this conversation and see where you can apply these, you know, 10 things to, again, your family, your team, simple stuff. It doesn't just have to be out the business world. Number six, set clear employee goals and expectations. This is really critical, and I would even encourage this for families. Setting clear goals and employee expectations for your team is key to employee success. When setting these objectives, encourage employee questions and feedback. Including them in the process can increase engagement. Amish Saw, president of ALTR Created Diamonds, said that good leaders will also explain the company vision and how team member goals fit into that equation. For a leader to motivate and inspire, they need to keep their team in the know about their vision. This helps everyone understand the end result they're working towards as a unit. When goals are clearly set, everyone can track progress and identify achievements in tangible manner. So super simple stuff. If you've ever been a part of a company or a team, you know, you kind of write down your goals or you should at the beginning of the year or the mission. And then you, you, and then you, you know, write down what the goal is. And ideally you're reverse engineering from that goal back to day one of how are we taking our first steps towards that goal. I would do this with my family. I did this with my high schoolers back in the day you know, here's our goal. And, you know, for a family, there's kind of no end game, but you know, maybe there's maybe for this year, it's, we're going to eat healthier, or we're going to help junior get to the next level in wrestling or art or piano. I don't know, whatever it is, set those goals. Don't be afraid to put this in your family dynamic in a less business formal way of saying, here's the end result. Let's reverse engineer our way back to it. And here's steps we can take right now and get the kids in the mix of that process and get them excited to be a part of this unit. We're not just this ambiguous family kind of you know, walking around, we're just here because we share the same last name. Like we're a unit. Let's have some collective goals and mindset where we can work together and work towards a common goal. And then as the parents are the leaders of that situation, be in that process with them, you know, talking about the human side. Today was a hard day. Today was a great day. You know, we, we tried this, this didn't work. Let's get back to this so we can be better tomorrow at X, Y, and Z. 
This is obviously really important for businesses. You know, if we need to be profitable, we need to make X amount of sales. Um, we need to tune into turmeric and tequila every day, uh, whatever it is. You let's let's write down these clear goals and, and what we're expecting. I think when expectations are clear, that brings us back to the very beginning where we can have open and clear communication because you know what we expect of one another. I think this is really critical um, in new relationships. Like personally, I think there's a, a graceful way to say, like, here's my expectations. Here's where I'm at. What are your goals? What are your expectations? Blah, blah, blah. Um, unless you're just out there having a hot girl summer, hot boy summer, follow your heart here for that. Uh, but if not, <laughs> go ahead and say it. Just say what it is. What are the expectations? See how this just applies everywhere. This whole human thing. It's all the way around. Number seven, give direct feedback about performance. Now, again, don't take this the wrong way, but you can put this in your personal world and say, here's what I need. Here's, you know, what works. Da, 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 da. Don't get carried away. Inappropriate here. I'm talking about anything. I really wish you would have made uh, more dinner last night. It wasn't enough for everyone. Like, let's go with this, this, and this. So it can go any which way. Uh, let's see. Give direct feedback about performance. Tao Du Val, CEO and founder of the Top Tao Freelance Talent ne Network, said, Direct, honest feedback, even if it's criticism, is the best way to guide your team in the right direction. You also need to know exactly where your business is headed so you can give them the right advice. If you're not direct, people won't know what you truly what you truly think about them and their work, and they will never be able to improve. Duval said, uh, if you don't know the precise direction your company is headed, no matter how much you've communicated in your, to your employees and leadership team regarding their individual performance, they will flounder when it comes to making decisions and taking actions. Once those basic principles are in place, deadlines, regular product plans, performance reviews, structure and processes can easily be put into place. In addition to providing constructive feedback and performance reviews, highlight employee accomplishments. If a team member does something great, let them know, celebrate their wins, and thank them for their hard work. Positive recognition will create an environment for, of product, productivity, said Shah. Uh, acknowledging success by outlining how it impacts the business rather than with vague pats on the back is not only encouraging, but also helps a person work better in the long run. So I don't know actually that I love the whole performance review, like formal thing. That's actually been proven not super effective in certain things. We won't go down that rabbit hole. I do completely agree with the feedback and performance review in regard to let's break this down intentionally. And it's not just like we know we have a set review in 90 days and we're going to just tell you how it went, blah, blah, blah. I think it's a continuous process that's a little bit more spontaneous of like when you see something good, you say something good and you really get specific on that feedback of here's, you know, how you were meeting expectations or here's how you didn't meet expectations, but let's roadmap how we can work around it. Um, it, and it's really direct feedback. But again, this starts with you as the leader and your clear clear vision for the team, for your family, for your business of here's what the expectations are. Here's how I'm going to be a leader in it. And this is the vision. Do we all understand what the goals are? So a lot of it starts with us as leaders. You've got to be really clear on the goals, the vision, what we're doing. Then we're communicating that to our team back. We're, you know, uh, supporting them in their journey. And then as we're going along it, we are giving that direct feedback. And in turn, we are accepting and encouraging feedback from our family members, from our team, from our fellow employees of how's this going? Like everything in this leadership process is fluid and human. So you have to know that it's constantly ebbing and flowing and changing. And you just got to kind of be like a buoyant buoy, stay in it, stay atop of the waves and be nimble, be ready to know that you're going to make mistakes. But in the end of it, you take personal responsibility to be constantly evolving and being better. And then so will your team. And in, in the, while you're doing this, the vision and the goals are still clear. You're staying alongside with that at the end game. The goalpost doesn't move. Um, so I digress, but give direct feedback about performance. And I can't say enough about this, especially working with kiddos or, um, younger people because they communicate differently than like some of the old school, again, traditional leadership. I'm talking about like 35 plus years old. If, if you're under that or in general operate with grace, I come from, I have three younger brothers. I have very, uh, forward speaking parents 
And this is something I've continuously worked on because especially in sports, like you just say what it is, it's cut and dry and it's moved. Da, 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 da. Like handling things with grace and, and graceful communication is critical because that's where that creates that space for openness and feedback. If you're constantly just really direct and intentional, a lot of people aren't going to feel comfortable coming back with feedback or saying anything because you're so aggressive. They don't really want to know. <laughs> they just want to get out of the way. Um, so that's in my DNA in case you couldn't tell. But uh, on the flip side of that, you know, the irony is I'm very turmeric and tequila or I'm actually deeply, deeply sensitive and I care so much that that directness really comes from passion. And then if, if there is a breakdown or something and I see you're upset or you're super hyped, I feel that back. So it's always um, an energy reciprocity type thing. Like you give and take what you give and take. So if I'm out there putting good, I'm going to get good back. So the more grace I use, the more grace I got back. And that was effective as for, for me as a leader. So I hope that makes sense. And this kind of leads to number eight, ask for feedback on your leadership. Your team members aren't the only ones who can benefit from honest feedback. A true self-assessment of your leadership can be difficult. So mentors, fellow professionals, and even your own staff are invaluable in evaluating your effectiveness according to saint marie talking to your friends and peers can give you necessary perspective on your leadership style and approach leadership coaching can also help you discover areas where you need improvement a professional who helps you develop a plan to achieve your leadership goals can be more motivational than books and seminars alone. Coaching allows leaders to make the connection and apply changes in a real life setting, L Lorio says. You need time to integrate, process, and reflect. And unless you go through those steps, you won't have sustainable change. So... um it says noting that your team could give you critical insight to what's working, what's not working, and what obstructions you must overcome to achieve success are critical. So this is great. It just kind of like what we just talked about in the one above. Again, all these fit together. Get that feedback. And this is the open communication. This is the space you've created for humanizing the process, understanding the vision clearly. Be open to how do you think. And this is new for a lot of leaders out there. This was not something we did in the past let me know what you think. I can't even imagine my college coach being like how's my leadership. We did actually have meetings where at the end of the year uh, we did, it wasn't like a performance review, but it was like an end of the year meeting just to check in. And I think we all, I, I remember, I mean, I was always pretty outspoken and honestly just was dense in a lot of areas. So I would say what I thought, probably not the most graceful way. This is why you grow up and take coaching and leadership classes. Um, so there was that space that I don't remember feeling super comfortable saying the truth of like, you know, I think this could be better, blah, blah, blah. So this is 20 plus years ago. And I actually think it was great that we even had those meetings. I don't know that a lot of teams did. Maybe they did. But having gone through that and being on the side where I didn't really feel comfortable saying my truths, even as, you know, an 18 year old or whatever, 20 year old, um, I can remember that now. Like I changed the way I do my meetings moving forward because I remember being in that position. So I do think it's, it's vulnerable space, but this is really great. And if you're uncomfortable as a leader, you've never done this before, start small. You know, just say like, how do you think this meeting went today? It doesn't have to be like a whole, what do you, how do you think I am as a human and as a leader? Just like, how was the meeting today? What's your feedback on this? Or how do you think practice was on Wednesday? How do you think this last, you know, sales pitch went da da da? Like just start with something little and just see how that opens up and recognize the energy shift. Um, in the person that you're asking, if it's your kiddo and you're asking about like how was, you know, family dinner tonight or how was uh, your coach and you say, how was practice today to your athlete? See how the kiddo, the athlete or the employee changes and see their energy when they're like, wow, like you're asking my opinion. Like, oh, OK. And see if they're uncomfortable in it. See if they are comfortable in it. Like recognize that. And if it's a little bit uncomfortable and it feels a little edgy, you know, you need to do it more. We got to lean in more to creating this space so they can openly and constructively give you feedback. Because, again, we are all working together towards that common goal towards that vision. And if we're not both trying to operate at 100% or be our best selves, we're not going to get to that goal. And even if we get to that goal and we didn't reach our peak of doing it the best way we can, there's missed opportunity there. So this constant changing fluid process has to be accountability on all sides. So take advantage of the opportunity of like, these are your teammates. These are your guys. Even if you're the leader and the boss, these guys are in the ship with you. Work with them. Get the feedback. Get the understanding. I actually think this is the most critical piece for families and, and parents. I think it's really hard to as a kid to say I think we could be doing this different because you don't know a lot you're a zero year old but you are in it and you are aware and our kiddos nowadays are you know they're thrown with so much so much earlier and they're so aware like I, their advice and the way they see things are phenomenal and their way doesn't have to be the way but you can blend all the ways together so it works for your family
Okay, so that's enough of uh, Dr. Phil view right there. But uh, number nine, be open to new ideas. This is simple, but the older we get, the more closed-minded we get because we get set in our routine and things just flow. So be open to new ideas. Good leaders have the emotional intelligence to understand and accept that change is inevitable. Great quote. The only thing that is constant is change. Write that down and know it. Embrace it. Instead of trying to maintain a status quo just for the sake of consistency, embrace change and innovation. Be open to new ideas and alternative ways of thinking. Everyone brings a unique perspective to the table, and that is something to take advantage of, not discourage. When you're open to hearing the thoughts of the talent around you, uh, when you're open to hearing the thoughts of the talent around you is when you truly embrace every possibility and potential. See things through till the end. Understand that there will be errors along the way, but if something doesn't work, try to figure out why and bef- figure out why and how before scraping it. When solving a problem, encourage team members to provide their insights. When employees feel like they can openly bring new ideas to the table, true innovation, engagement, and success can prevail. Key takeaway: encourage and encourage your employees to bring new ideas and perspectives to the table by doing so you empower your team to become more innovative and and invested in company growth so again kind of the same stuff open communication their safe space to talk so now employees your teammates your team members your kiddos can come in and say here's an idea why don't we try this and even if you're the smartest brightest human most experienced all the courses degrees blah 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 in the world you still only have one perspective and one experience and that's your own when you have a multitude of humans with all different perspectives and all different experiences you have you have that much more opportunity um to elevate and to innovate and to create than you did by yourself. So this is where working with a team is so magical. You have all these different perspectives and these experiences brought to the table where you can collectively make this journey, vision, goal, whatever it is, that much more attainable because you've got all these different skill sets, ideas, and viewpoints. And in turn, if you're big on diversity and inclusion, which you know we are on turmeric and tequila, now you're not only setting the vision and working in all these different perspectives, people watching this journey can relate to it in more capacities because it speaks to that many more people that come from that authentic space because you're representing all these different perspectives, experiences, innovations, whatever. So again, this impact, this influence, this leadership goes well beyond your personal goal, your personal team at hand. It shows an operation moving that people are watching even if it's like a top secret mission someone's watching if you're in the fbi and your husband or wife's in it like they kind of know i mean it might be a secret but not really uh what you're doing how you're operating like you'd be surprised how many people are watching certain teams and things and companies move uh that maybe don't even have any stake in the game they might just be you know a a fan or something else i hope that makes sense but my, my point is that you got to be open to ideas because more people are watching than you think, but also it's the only way to really level up and, and stay ahead of the game. It's a competitive space out there. Like you need everyone and everything to get to that next level. So lean into your humans around you and be super open to ideas. Number 10, understand your own motivation. This almost brings us back to, well, pseudo number one, I said it's about personal responsibility. This is it. And if you're wondering how to get to your own motivation, you know you can jump on our core values test on koalliance.com under courses. We've got an influencer course. I'm not even telling you right now i'm just telling you if you want to get dialed in as a leader get dialed in as yourself and understand your personal core values your intrinsic motivation and why you're doing something so you can help people find theirs number 10 understand your own motivation if a person is a leadership position if a person in a leadership position views their role as just a job it's going to show to be an effective leader you need the right motivation it is is it for the money or the prestige that you care about? Do you sincerely want to inspire people to do their best? St. Marie advises leaders really ask themselves why they want to lead. I look at leadership as an honor and a vacation, uh, a vocation, excuse me. I, if in your heart you feel leadership is your destiny and how you make a difference in this world, then you are certainly starting from the right place. In addition to what motivates you, uh, Ulrich, another philosopher, said it is important to know what decreases your energy. Knowing your strengths and weaknesses help you diversify your team and get a well-rounded portfolio of skills. It helps you not hire carbon copies of yourself and surround yourself with others who are not like you. Your leadership style plays a role in how you interact with employees and should be evaluated as well. There are nine different leadership styles and the best leaders are are able to adapt 
each style to their situations and employees. If you are currently in a leadership role and aren't sure where you stand on some of these qualities, you can take a quick, quick assessment. Of course, they're selling their thing um, from Leading with Courage Academy that assesses your leadership abilities. Remember, a good leader takes time. Although some individuals are naturally inclined to have good leadership skills, it is something anyone can learn and improve upon. With hard work, dedication, and strategic planning, you can lead your team to success. So same, same. It's all about getting to know yourself, understanding your own expectations, walking in it, being the example, being the leader, and then cultivating the safe space for open communication, feedback, new ideas, and getting that diverse team. I love that, you know, this uh, article, which I'll post the whole thing in the skills, and I only highlighted really like pieces of it, but it really talks about uh, a diversified perspective and getting people that aren't like you. I think old school leadership, they wanted like 10 versions of themselves and cause like it was comfortable. Like then you knew how to do it, but ultimately like then you have 10 perspectives that are the exact same and you're going to get wiped away by uh, these other companies, teams, situations that have a really diverse um, set of humans and perspectives that can level up and innovate in different ways and appeal to more people. So this is so much bigger than just executing a goal, a championship, you know, X amount of dollars, a profit, a successful company, a thriving family. It's really about how are we walking in this world as leaders on and off the field, in and out of the house and leveling up as individuals so we can collectively level up as a society. It's all the cliches, but I, as this person said, you know, it's, um, is it in your heart? Is this something you really want to do? She said, I look at leadership as an honor and a vocation. And if in your heart you feel leadership is your destiny and how you'll make a difference in this world, you are certainly starting from the right place. That is my audience. That's who we're talking to. If you already feel that leadership role in your heart, which I absolutely believe every single human out there is a leader, is an influencer, is an inspirer in some capacity, if you feel it and you walk it, you feel that responsibility to take care of yourself so you can take care of others you're in it. You are on the right path. You're hearing this conversation for a reason. You're a leader. Continue to level up those skills. Take time for you. Take a course, like level up to your best self, understand yourself. So in turn, you can be that phenomenal leader, building a diverse team with diverse perspectives in pursuit of a mission um, and spreading all this positive energy and innovation and, you know, being this example for other teams and leaders. And we talk a lot about like the goal and where we're going in this, but truthfully, time is our finite resource. This is about enjoying the journey, working alongside your fellow humans to enjoy the process of working towards the goal. If, uh, when I reflect upon my athletic experience in college, it was, you know, I don't know that we necessarily reached our goals. You know, we didn't win the championship or whatever, and that might not even have been the deck of cards in all reality, but I look back on the process and just smile all the the hard part the great part the happy tears the hard tears the hard conversations that journey it was four five years because i had a red shirt of being in it regardless if we got to the goal or not which is always important it was the journey so it was such a great lesson for me you know as i got older like all these things that i was chasing in crossfit or business entrepreneur you know there's an end game there's things that i want but man you've got to enjoy that journey the in between there's a great poem called the dash and it's like the dash in between the date you're born and the date you die and like the dash the in between is what matters so you've really got to pull back and like be conscious about a leader do this do that but like the goals and the journey and the mission are amazing. It's the collective whole of all those things. So that's all of the philosophy and the woo I'm going to give you for today. I know you get it a lot of through tequila, but it's humanize everything. Like get back to your authentic self. So you get the right people around you. You head towards the right mission. You are your most purposeful self, but gosh darn it, you are enjoying this freaking journey as we pursue our goals. So stay in it, be a leader. You know, we've got uh, the whole human way coming out. I'm really excited about this program. It's very much a work in progress. It's kind of going to be like, and an, an, if you know, you know, but it's really about combining coaching and leadership and health, finance, nutrition. Um, it's for my people that are really working to level up on all levels. All at once is a 90 day program. So it's coming. I'm not going to say a lot of details right now, but there is a plethora of free resources out there. If you are looking to level up as a leader and you just want something right now there's tons of stuff on udemy i'm diving into courses on my own um there's stuff on teachable like i said i've got an affordable influencer course where there's free options and they're from accredited universities georgetown university what have you just google free leadership classes you can find an abundance of resources out there for free right now to help you le level up so i'm a big fan of exercising uh all of the resources at our fingertips to continuously level up and 
in turn, you'll start to see that other leaders will start to walk in to your world and you can talk to them about these experiences. And then before you know it, your own little leadership team is happening. So that's all I got for you today. I don't know if you can see my breath on the video, but it's freezing in here. My heart is full though, because I'm with you and we're going to continue to level up and be better leaders for ourselves and for this world. Have a great day. Be sure to check us out where you get your podcast and look for this video on YouTube, especially if you want to see me. Um, All right. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.